So in other tutorials and guides on my channel, I've commonly used, uh, well, not commonly, but once in a while I'll throw in a background job or something like that. That's something you can queue up later. And this is part of Ruby on Rails by default, and it's a way to essentially put a lot of uh, taxing queries or queue up this process of things you want to do and put it in like a, almost like a, a timeline of events. So, and then you could declare certain priorities of those events. So active job is actually the little mini framework within rails that's responsible for creating those jobs and queuing them and executing in them. And in the rails community, you commonly hear other gems being talked about that kind of, you know, strap into active job and do a lot more. Um, the biggest one I think, or the most popular one is probably called sidekick. Um, there was one back in the day called uh, delay job. It was actually made by Toby from Shopify, which is a big rails app, probably one of the biggest forked over from these guys now and is still getting um, some treatment, but essentially they're very similar in tech um, sidekicks more. I, I don't even honestly know the huge big differences. I've only used Sidekick in the past, so my my opinion is probably a terrible one to follow, but that's just one that, that I'm kind of familiar with. You're open to go check out uh, a lot of different queuing adapters. If, if you look at the uh, API of API docs of active job, there's quite a big list here and some comparisons to give you some ideas. Um, but yeah, this guide's more or less just talking you through what active job is, what it's responsible for, and how you can use something like Sidekick uh, to kind of make use of it and um, use the built-ins to make your app essentially not fall over if say your user base grew exponentially and you need to send out a bunch of emails or perform a lot of uh, taxing requests or some sort of um, background like image processing or something like that that's just gonna take a lot of time. Typically you wanna put that in a job and what I like to do is, is you know, make it a single purpose thing. So jobs can be pretty simple to start with and you'd probably making a job would be something that's just really gonna probably take some time to, to send. So for instance, if you say, say you have like a huge user list that you send emails to through your Rails app, um, transaction emails, et cetera, that can be done from a job. But the cool thing is act, they actually connect the dots between action mailer and active job. So you can actually your mailers to um, do this delayed sending. So it's actually built into the active job framework to allow mailers to send in bulk fashion without like making your app really just keel over. So the idea is essentially just putting something in the background, hence the name, and um, letting it queue up and do its thing later. And it's pretty neat because you can do big cool requests that like maybe go fetch and scrape some API um, and pull in data, which is commonly what I do uh, for a client I actually do some data processing. We hit a couple APIs, go and maybe every week or so fetch like a, a CSV file or, you know, some sort of request and fetch the API, import that into Rails, so the database of the app itself. And then once that's all done, I can call one of these little callbacks and it'll send an email notifying that the import is complete. So after these big long tasks, a lot of times they take a lot of time and you want to at least alert someone. And typically it's maybe the person who is performing the operation. So that's just kind of a little quick overview of what that is, um, why you would might want to use an active job. Um, literally creating a job, they come by default in your app. So when you do a Rails new, whatever your app name, it's going to have a jobs folder in the app directory. And I'll have an application job that um, inherits from active job base, which is the actual API that's doing all this stuff. Um, there's some commented stuff here that you could actually uncommon if you want to add these options, like a deserialization error. Um, when you do create a new job, you can actually pass instances through the job from your other parts of your app. So you can do um, some operations inside the job, making it less taxing on like the actual server. So it's, it's kind of a nice way to kind of extract that logic and do it elsewhere while the app is still performant and not dependent on that ex execution layer to be done right then and there. So if that makes sense. So to create a new job, it's actually built into the rails, um, generators. So if you just run rails G, you could see all the list of those. Let's see, we got a job right here. So if you do rails G, 
g job let's see if it pulls back anything else any help docs uh, this creates active job file at app jobs is what it essentially does um, you can pass some options here if you want tests to go with it um, if you want to skip any of these collisions if there's already files for instance you'd want to skip those if you want to the different little flag here called Q is something to take into account. There's going to be a default Q by, by default. Um, active job kind of ships with that. But you can actually queue up and create your own queues um, that essentially prioritize when a job gets performed. So I think the biggest use case here might be with Sidekick. Um, you can have different priorities of the, the stack, so to speak. So when you perform something that's maybe a little more um, user centric the user needs some sort of data immediately you might want to do that first highest in priority and then other stuff where it's just like processing some video or images or whatever in the background that can come later or be the default so you can set your own set of um, custom queues for the specific job you need I honestly don't set very many different queues I pretty much use the default because that meets most of my needs but I haven't done really an app that's it's doing a lot of heavy logic behind the scenes like that so much as maybe just like an API and import sequence, maybe. So those things could take dominance if your app's pretty big. So at scale, I can see that being a huge thing to take advantage of. But right now, I don't really work on crazy huge apps, but there are some instances where it might make sense. So you might consider that. Um, to, so to create a new job, you can say Rails generate job and then just call it whatever, like um, welcome email job so when you create welcome email you typically would do like either a camel case or snake case and it'll actually add the job suffix so you just go ahead and add that uh, dynamically you wouldn't have to actually type that so keep that in mind and then like we could have just passed the the, key, the queue here if we wanted to but it's going to default to um, default as you can see so there's nothing really left to be done if we go back to your code you'll see if a new file has been created it's called uh, welcome email job so in here is going to be a perform method you basically wouldn't really change the name of that method but you can pass in certain arguments here um, and do something with it later hence the name commonly what I do here um, I mean this doesn't make a ton of sense since action mailer has this stuff built in but you could do something like this where it's just a welcome email and you could do maybe something piggybacking on that email. Um, I think there's actually a, yeah, so you'd have basically, um, this is kind of a, a redundant example, but because action mailer is actually part of or hooks into it, you would, could just do this without this job in, entirely. So maybe we'd have like, I'm gonna delete that job real quick and show you. So Rails delete job, welcome email. You could type D there and it should go ahead and fetch all the files that were generated and delete those. There we go. And they could just do it again and we'll say generate, um, let's see, I don't know, user batches, users from other sites, maybe you wanna do. So user import job, you do something in this environment, maybe you'd say, um, I don't know, user.create and then have name, you know, email, et cetera. Um, and then within the args, you could pass pretty much anything through here. So you could, you know, pass whatever, maybe it's a user instance and then and just say user.name user.email, et cetera, and just kind of go down the line and create that. And a lot of times what I like to do is add a bang here because that will throw an exception if something's wrong. Maybe that data didn't get piped through correctly and it'll actually queue the job to kind of either, um, you know, delete or uh, retry itself. And typically with active job, action job, you need a background queuing service. And I've already talked about this, like Sidekick being the most popular, but to actually install that, you'd actually need to change your um, configuration to do so. So in your application environment, you might do something here. I believe you can do it in per environment as well. So Jim install Sidekick. So yeah, of course you need to go to the Jim file, installed Sidekick. I'll just throw it down here. and run bundle. And it should go fetch that data and install it. There is a Sidekick UI you can install if you want to add that. We'll look at that thing. 
yeah, so this is like the latest seven version, I believe. So it's pretty new. And the aspect of sidekick, you can essentially forego doing any active job. If you want to do that, you can optionally add it to uh, extend active job, which is honestly what I do personally. So I'd go to this active job tab and you need to go into your application file and just configure active job to use sidekick as its queuing service, if that makes sense. So you'd essentially just add that here if you want could do it per environment, but I think you're probably going to just use Sidekick in both environments, uh, development, test, and um, production probably. So then you could just save that down. You'd essentially have that hooked up now because there's a queuing adapter you can just append Sidekick to. You generate your job in this instance, and if you look at the job here, um, it's going to inherit for application job, which is what we want. Um, if it were a side kick job or something different, you'd probably want to um, inherit from sidekick independently. Uh, so that would look just a little bit different, but be very similar in style of writing. So then here you'd perform your job. It's queued as default. So we'd have our you know user creation. Maybe you'd say um, users, um, users dot each do user. And then you'd create those instances. So maybe like, I don't know, maybe you're, you're coming through with a batch of users from a CVS or CSV. Well, I can't say that right. Not CVS. That'd be a drugstore, uh, but CSV. And then you pull that through. Maybe it's got the data you want and it's just mapped perfectly, which is never the case. But in this case, I'm going to sh show it that way. And you just map through, create those. And I, I like to, I mean, you don't have to, but you can do a, like a put statement just to kind of log something, but it's not crucial. Some, sometimes it's fun uh, to do, especially if maybe it's part of um, some output you can see. And then uh, essentially you'd go maybe in your controller or, you know, after a callback action in your model, you can perform these operations. So I'm just going to just say whatever here for now, def new. This isn't the controller I'd use, but you'd say like, if I don't know, post that save else this, and you could say, um, you know, post blah, blah, blah. This would be, this is actually, I'm thinking of create. So let's do create new with the params post. Params. So this is kind of, kind of the convention you typically see when like the create action. Um, but then following that, you could do something like um, we'd call our job in this case. So user import job. Perform. And maybe you have like post users. I don't, I don't know how this would work, but something like that or to that effect that you could have some instance of a, of array or a collection of users you could pass those through you could do something like that but it's kind of frowned upon to send that much data through a instance of the job so you typically want to add like maybe they're just their ids or something because then you run the risk of things just not being serialized correctly so instead of this big massive collection you could maybe just get users ids something like that that's like more of a, a single digit fashion that's tinier tinier amount of data to send through and then on the other end of the job that where is where you'd want to really do your logic so you could say like um it would be user ids here so you could say user where cool thing you could do with active record is just say where ID is that that gives you your collection of users like something like that and then you could do something where you loop through and create to that effect um, this is all invented out of thin air so nothing really logical makes sense here I know but that's just the kind of the patterns I go about doing um, you run the risk like I said before of you know if you if you try to send too much through here uh, the job might not perform or might just have a uh, incorrect instance so that you might see like de deserialization error when you see um, like sidekicks um, web UI 
that's one of those things that you might want to consider. Um, so yeah, that's part of actually the best practices. Um, you'd want to make your job parameters as small and simple. So you want to, you know, almost only want to send a single ID through, but that's kind of hard. So in this case, maybe you could do that. So you'd have the post ID and then, uh, over here, you'd go through and get post instead of user IDs being passed through, you could say just the post ID. And you could say post equals post dot find post ID. So that gives you your post. Then you could say post dot user IDs here. As an example, there's something that could work if it were indeed true. So then also you'd want to make the job, um, this word, I don't know, but transactional. Essentially it means just your job can be run over and over and it's safe to do so. So some ca some cases this might not be safe, but um, I think it's okay. You could go back and delete users pretty quickly if you need to. Um, sometimes the error function on jobs means you need to retry over and over and it'll actually work at some point. But most of the times when I have a job that's not far, like working correctly, it's because I did a um, self-inflicting error. So some sort of typo or some sort of data being passed through is way too big to kind of get through the mix. I think that's the general use case for jobs. I mean, typically you'd, like I said before, you do very hefty things in this area and don't be afraid of doing logic like this in these jobs. It's actually, actually considered a good practice where you're not doing it on the controller side or passing too much stuff through the instance of, of this. Um, you could also just say perform later here if, if you want to do it that way. Um, I think that's actually the use case you'd, you'd want to do. Perform a D, perform later would be the delayed, put it on the queue aspect, and you're able to do that. Right on. So hopefully that's useful. I know I kind of rambled a bit. Um, what I'd recommend is going into the active job documentation. This is where it's going to really kind of click, I think. Um, you see these perform later methods that's just built in. Uh, a cool thing you can do as well as it shows here is set a certain date to perform the, the job. So you could do that in your controller here. So instead of perform later, just a generic edge case, you could say set wait until some sort of date. So this is great for scheduling a post, like post schedule that or something. And then uh, ID would be that. And you need to spell correctly until. And perform later. Is that wrong? There we go. So something like that. That's pretty useful if you want to do stuff that's simple scheduling. Um, I do this on the blog. Basically, I have a schedule that select field. So I'll just say like a date picker. And then um, when I want to set the date, it'll go live. Um, and then I'll, my action will kick this off when that date transpires. Then it hits sidekick and will be in the, the, you know, the line of things to do. Um, and then kind of kick itself live. So it's very automated, a great way to almost, you know, program in your sleep, which is great. Um, really powerful tool that so I recommend getting into the, the groove of that. If you have very taxing, um, operations, queries, etc. cetera, just throw them in a background job. It's, it's honestly going to make your app way less sluggish and just easier to digest. Um, these are also very easy to find in the app and understand. So when you, someone sees this job sequence, they know automatically it's going to be a background queued thing. So something that's being done in the background behind the scenes. Um, and then they could go to this folder, figure out what's going on and just kind of go from there. So the conventions around that little framework are, are apparent and very useful with Rails.